Hi, this is Raj with a couple of visual examples on how our camera works uh, when we are in shutter priority or TV uh, mode, time value mode, uh, or aperture priority mode, AV, or on full auto. And we'll look at some photos and compare how our camera adjusts based on our preferred setting that we use. So I went in the backyard and took some pictures in the shade, uh, set the ISO to 400 uh, to compensate for the amount of available light was there. that was there. And I'm going to start out with a very long exposure, uh, one eighth of a second. Um, of course, can't hold that by hand, so I'm using a tripod uh, for all these images. And when I set the camera to in shutter speed priority mode, at one eighth of a second, the camera is calculating that to get a good exposure, it will need to close the aperture uh, to f-stop 14. Now remember that f-stops typically range from uh, wide open, which for most cameras these days is about f 3.5 to 4, uh, depending on the lens. Uh, if you get some of the bigger lenses, uh, it op can open up a little bit wider to f 2.8. And then on the other end of it, uh, the narrowest opening, most cameras are uh, topping out at about f32 uh, or f22, depending on the lens. So this exposure, one eighth of a second, um, f14 comes out with a nice image. If we change that and have a shorter shutter speed, say one thirteenth of a second, the camera says that, hey, there's the amount of light coming in is coming in for less of a duration, so I need to open up that aperture a little bit to make sure that we have a comparable image. And it set that at f, f11. Let's go to another one at 1 30th of a second. And we can see that at 1 30th of a second, uh, a little bit quicker duration, that the camera says, okay, well, to get a decent image, I need to. Uh, open up the aperture more to f7.1. Let's go to 1 60th of a second and f5, so a little bit wider. 1 125th of a second, f3.5. And at 1 200th of a second, the camera is, on my lens anyway, topping out at uh, wide open, with which is f2.8. Now if we scroll quickly through these images, if you look at it, the exposure stays relatively the same. Even though we're changing the shutter speed, the camera is adjusting by finding the, the correct aperture to make the image be uh, a suitable image with the right amount of light. So that's how uh, the camera works in aperture priority mode. Now if we keep going, uh, we to faster shutter speeds, less less duration, my lens is already topped out at wide open of f2.8 and as we go faster you can see that the camera just cannot get enough light anymore. It's opened the lens up, lens aperture up as far as it will go uh, and just by increasing the shutter speed we're letting less and less light into the camera and the camera has no way to compensate for it with the steady ISO of 400 and the camera lens aperture wide open at f2.8. It just has nowhere to go to get any more light. So there's a quick uh, overview of shutter speed priority. Now let's move to aperture priority and we'll see relatively the same thing. I still have my camera set at uh, ISO of 400. And I'm going to start with the camera lens aperture open as wide as it can to let the most amount of light in. That f-stop on this camera lens that I'm using is f2.8. And you can see that the camera at f2.8 has decided, well, at f2.8 I need to have an exposure of about 1 180th of a second. So let's say that uh, I adjust that a little bit. I don't want to shoot wide open at 2.8. I want to get a little bit more depth of field, so I stop that down to f3.5. Well, the camera, uh, noticing that 
the aperture opening is decreasing, getting smaller. Now it's f3.5. Uh, remember, the larger number you go, the smaller the opening with aperture. Well, the camera has decided that instead of 100, 1 180th of a second at f2.8, at f3.5, it's got to get a little bit faster um, at uh, 1 120th of a second, a little bit slower, I'm sorry. So, smaller opening, longer duration of exposure. And as we go to f4.5, and 5.6, and f8, we can see that as we are closing the aperture, remember the larger the number, the smaller the opening in that lens, you can see that the time that's required to get a decent exposure is increasing. And as we go back the other way, just the opposite is happening. And the, as you'll notice as we go through these images, they're all about the same. There's about the same level of brightness, same level of color. Uh, the only th the things that are changing is I'm dictating what f-stop I want to use, and the camera is adjusting with the corresponding shutter speed, which in this case is not an issue because I've got it on a tripod and can hold the camera steady when it gets into those slower shutter speeds. The other thing that uh, you might want to pay attention to as we're scrolling through here, we'll do that a couple more times, is take a look at the rock in the background. See how at f2.8 that rock is not in focus at all. It's a very blurry, uh, very blurred background, which is kind of a nice effect and brings that flower out. Uh, makes it stand out a little bit more. As we decrease the aperture opening in our lens from f2.8 to f22, uh, we are increasing the depth of field. It's just the way that light works. The light is coming in at more of a direct shot rather than being bent one direction into the camera and another direction back onto the sensor. Um, so that allows for a greater depth of field, so that rock, as we go from f2.8 to f22, will seem to be coming more in focus. And let's try that now. So as you can see, uh, at f32, with a greater depth of field, that rock in the background is much more in focus than at f2.8. Okay, and then uh, we'll jump over to um, just a quick comparison of ISO. Now I have the camera in fully automatic mode, or, or in uh, program mode, and I'm going to choose the ISO. So I have decided that I don't want there to be much grain or noise in this picture, so I set my ISO as low as it could go, ISO of 100. Still have it on the tripod, and the camera has said, well, you know what, at ISO 100, I'm going to pick f2.8, wide open lens, and 1 45th of a second to get a good exposure. Let's uh, say that I want to be able to, I don't have my tripod with, so I want to be able to hold my lens, and, and I'm going to jump that ISO up to ISO 200, which allows me to hand hold my camera at 1 60th of a second at an f-stop of f3.5. And if I wanted to go to ISO 400, the camera has decided that it can get by with 1 90th of a second exposure at f4, at ISO 800, and as you can see, as we're going through these images, changing the ISO, we're not really changing the quality of the image at all with regards to lighting structure um, and saturation going from 100 to 200 to 4 to 8, uh, and then up to 1600 I can shoot a little bit faster since I'm making my sensor much more sensitive to light, uh, much more responsive to available light that's there, and because of that I can shoot at a faster shutter speed of 100, 1 180th of a second at f5.6. So there's a quick overview of the way exposure happens in a camera based on the type of mode that we're shooting in.